Hello, friends at St. Luke. We're on our fourth uh, Bible study for Lent. Now we're looking at the seven sayings of Jesus that he spoke from the cross. And uh, the first one was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Second was spoken to the criminal that was crucified with him, who uh, asked Jesus to remember him. And Jesus said, uh, today you will be with me in paradise. The third was spoken to as he looked down upon Mary and his beloved disciple and said, Mary, here, John is now your son. Take care of him. And I'll be healing in that. And he said to the beloved disciple, now you take care of my my mother as, as your own. And now we come to the fourth saying, a difficult one. Uh, but that shows how Jesus understood the sorrow that comes to us when because of our sins when we feel separated uh, when we feel the sadness the the pain the suffering the tribulation that comes to this world and have no hope uh, all of which Jesus endured for you and for me as he cried out my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, why hast thou forsaken me? Difficult words, uh, but that's how we would have felt abandoned, separated, no hope, just darkness, gnashing of teeth. Uh, but Jesus took that upon himself. And uh, we'll find that really those are words, not just of abandonment, hopelessness, but really point to a hope and an assurance. Even as we suffer, we know God is with us in the darkness and fulfilling his promise that all things, no matter how painful, they will work together for good for those who love God. Uh, let's begin uh, well, I'm going to begin with a prayer and then share a, a little different song that I had written about uh, the cross, how long this journey is uh, from Ash Wednesday to Good Friday and ultimately to, to Easter. But let us pray. Lord, there are so many times in this life when we endure in this sinful, broken world, sadness and sorrow injustice, pain, and like Jesus, we echo his cry, for, why, my God, have you forsaken me? I feel all alone. I feel that evil is winning. Help us as Jesus reveals that you are always with us, even in the darkness, as you did on Good Friday, uh, turning the darkest bleakest, most terrible moment of all, Good Friday, into the greatest moment when light prevailed and the tomb uh, was filled with the voice of the angels who said, he is not here, he is risen. And so in our suffering, we know as we persevere, as we are patient and put, keep our trust in you, that uh, blessings and resurrection, newness of life await us. Amen. This was another song that I wrote uh, uh, for Lent. And it's a long journey, a uh, difficult one. We repent. We remember Jesus' suffering. We recall our baptism. We uh, sacrifice and, and uh, fast and, and seek to remember the poor and the less fortunate. We stay focused on the cross. It's a long, long journey to the cross. It's a long, long journey to the cross. With faith and prayer, God will bring us safely there. It's a long, long journey to the cross. Let us journey together to the cross. 
Let us journey together to the cross. Oh, my sister, my brother, we will help one another. Let us journey together to that cross. And that's what we're trying to do in providing these uh, seven Bible studies, all focused on Jesus' final words from the cross. And this one's a difficult one. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew wrote these words, uh, one of the disciples of Jesus. And uh, we hear of it in Matthew 27. From noon on darkness came over the whole land uh, until three in the afternoon, three hours darkness covered the earth as Jesus died. Maybe God wanted to uh, shield his son from the sinful eyes of the world. And about uh, three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani. That means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to Jesus to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Again, each uh, the Gospels have different sayings. Why? But this is a tough one. And maybe you've felt that. God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? You, you see the pain, the suffering in this world. You say, God, where are you? Why do you allow such suffering to take place? And we say that, where's God? He said, I will be with you always. And maybe there's comfort in that, knowing that we're not alone. When we suffer, we see others suffering. God is there in the midst. God's promises, he can take the suffering of this world and turn it around for good. And sometimes you say, what good can come of it? All these painful moments that we witness, that we experience. God says, I will be with you and I will turn it around for good. And God does say that one day there will be a day of judgment. Those who cause uh, suffering and pain, especially to the innocent, especially to children, Jesus says they will answer to a day of judgment when he comes again in glory and power to judge the nations. And God does uh, say that suffering can help us uh, de develop and become the person God intends us to be. Uh, St. Paul, who suffered so much as he became a Christian, uh, was arrested, persecuted, would be in, put in prison, would be killed, uh, terrible death, he writes, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. It's hard when you're suffering. And we've all been there. Once you become a Christian, don't think, oh, now I won't ever have a bad day. Everything will be a blessing. No, it doesn't work that way. But we have the assurance that 
one day God will overcome all the suffering and pain of this world. All things will be made new and we will be brought unto that heavenly kingdom where he says there's not going to be no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrow. The suffering and pain that Jesus endured was prophesied uh, many years before Jesus would be born in the prophet Isaiah in the 53rd chapter. It just amazes me. This is almost an eyewitness account of what would take place on Good Friday, written uh, centuries before. Isaiah wrote, He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him in low esteem. That's Jesus suffering. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced, his hands, his feet, his side, the crown of thorns, pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed. He fell underneath the weight of the cross for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace. Again, peace with God. We're no longer at war with him. He's no longer angry with us. Was in him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Let me read a little bit more. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was quiet. Guard slapped Jesus, said, answer. The governor, when he asked you a question, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. He had the power to call upon the angels to set him free. He was God Almighty, yet he humbled himself like a lamb led to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent. He did not open his mouth. He was killed when the Passover lambs were being slaughtered uh, in the temple. That was the day of Good Friday, and he becomes the Lamb of God and whom our sins are forgiven. Well, I encourage you, read Isaiah 53. It was all prophesied that the Messiah uh, would suffer. Jesus himself said, <laughs> To the disciples, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Jesus told the disciples that he would suffer. And he described discipleship. Take up your cross. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be painful. There will be suffering. And then Jesus says, <laughs> you must deny yourself. Take up the cross if you would follow. Follow him. <laughs> Discipleship, following Jesus, isn't always easy. And in this sinful world, there will be uh, times of suffering, pain. And when that happens, don't think, well, what did I do wrong? Has God abandoned me? Is God dead like some would claim? No, he's there in the suffering. And sometimes just having someone there with you can help give you strength. You don't have to have the answers. Just be there uh, quietly, sharing in my pain, my sorrow. That's God. We know he shares in our pain. We see it on Calvary's cross. But he also says one day, uh, the sinful, the unjust, those who cause suffering and the tragedy, there will be a day of accounting and judgment. And one day he will make all things new. Um, in the midst of suffering, think back to maybe a time that you went through a difficult time. Maybe you're going through it now. But as you think back to those times when you felt abandoned by God, and I've had my share, just like all of us, after time you realize 
I can see how God took that difficult moment and he turned it around for good. He was there even as I was wrestling with him, struggling, accusing him of leaving me. He was there just as he was with Jesus. And uh, think about during this time of Lent, uh, can you be a support, a living presence of Christ to someone who's suffering, who's lonely, who experienced a tragedy or an injustice? How could you? Again, you don't have to have the answers. Maybe just be a, a partner, a silent presence in that person's life. A member of mine, she lost her husband in a tragic accident. And she said, you know, people came up, they said things, they meant well. But she said, it was so comforting just that they were there with me. I wasn't looking for answers. I was just looking for someone to lean upon. Say a prayer for someone. And then I'm going to say Christians today continue to be carrying crosses, persecuted, martyred throughout the world. Say a prayer for the martyrs who remain faithful even in the face of death. We're fortunate in the United States. We don't experience that persecution, that martyrdom. Our attacks are more subtle from Satan, a world in our flesh. But say a prayer for those who are being martyred, persecuted for their faith, that their, that their deaths will be the seeds of the future church and that their witness, even in the face of death, will move hearts uh, to come to the saving faith in, in Jesus. I'll encourage you to, there's a lot of movies that depict Jesus you know, suffering brutal uh, death <laughs> at the hands of sinners. Uh, take time to watch a, a movie or two uh, that depicts uh, the crucifixion of Jesus and uh, be a witness to how much our Lord endured for you and for me. And then when you go through suffering, and we all will, just uh, ask a prayer for perseverance, for understanding, patience, faith, and uh, trust in God when you experience those difficult times. Something that's helped me, an example, I think of, I think of Mary. Before she knew how everything would turn out, she said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And when I go through difficult times and I'm worried and my faith uh, is flickering, I say, God, let me say a prayer of thanks unto you. Things are not resolved. They're uncertain. It's painful. But I say, God, I'm going to magnify you. I know already that everything's in your hands, your care. You have not forsaken. You have not abandoned us. And you are now taking care of things that they will work together for good for those who love you. I'll close with this. Jesus is quoting Psalm 22, as he dies on the cross. And maybe at that moment, he was thinking about Mary and Joseph. Mary was there at the foot of the cross. And remembering, they taught me this psalm. Maybe he was thinking of his synagogue, his church. <laughs> Good times. Wasn't the sorrow that he was experiencing at that moment. Maybe how proud his parents were. He memorized this as rabbi. He felt that assurance. But the psalm begins with sorrow and almost again a prophecy of what Jesus endures. We read it on uh, Monday, Thursday. But if you read it to the end, and I'll jump to the end, 
It really ends with words of praise, thanksgiving for God's victory and faithfulness. Psalm 22 says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. That's Jesus. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusted in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. And they just say that on Calvary. Let him deliver him, since he delights in God. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are in display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, and my precious life from the power of the dogs. And then it jumps down. I will declare your name to my people in the assembly. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. This isn't what Jesus said, but he quotes the beginning of the psalm. And those who knew it know it's a psalm of praise and victory. For God has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. Psalm goes on, from you comes the, the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before these, those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. He was fulfilling why he came on earth. All the ends of the earth will remember, we remember, part, important part of life. And will turn, repent unto the Lord. And all the families of the nation, here is your mother. Here is your son. Families of the nation, father, will bow down before our Lord. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim the righteousness. Declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. And those, that plea, that cry, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? He's really saying, in the end, you will be triumphant, Lord. And I know you are here with me, taking care of me, making this darkest moment become a moment of light and victory of the Easter resurrection. I'm going to close with the one uh, song. Uh, ah, holy Jesus. Ah, holy Jesus, how hast thou offended that we to judge thee have in hate pretended by foes derided by thine own rejected, O oh, most afflicted. And then it says he died for you and for me. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you know our suffering, our pain. As we oftentimes cry out, why, Lord, have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? I don't feel your abiding presence but with jesus we know that you are with us even in the most difficult of times the greatest suffering and that your promises you'll never leave us and that as you did on good friday unto easter you will take our moments of despair and turn them into moments of uh, great rejoicing be with those who are suffering tribulation and sorrow and help them to be strengthened and persevere in faith and help us support those who are going through difficult times thank you for saint luke's a congregation that truly cares and jesus our savior amen we will continue on uh with our all right we're on the, the fifth word uh, I thirst be our next Bible study. Thank you. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.